what's going on guys how's everybody doing wanted to make a video about how to get into appliance repair how to um, what is the life of an appliance repair technician and kind of just break down the field a little bit um, now this is from my perspective mind you but um the way I got started into appliance repair was um I had a cousin of mine who was um doing it and um he kept telling me about like how I had to get into this field and um he kept telling me like you know how much money he was making and that you know it's a good field and um I was in a transitional period in my life so you know I I was in I was on the other side of the country though so you know I started doing my homework and I think I went to a website called like salary.com and I was looking up like how much do appliance repair technicians actually make now there's a stark difference from an appliance repair technician and someone who runs their own company or works for themselves and um i think salary.com had it for like 35 to 42,000 i never worked for no other company so i i can't tell you if that number is valid or not but after doing my research i was a little skeptical and leery like telling my cousin like man I don't know man like it's saying you know that this is what these guys are making and you know I never even heard of this industry you sure and you know he started sending me like invoices and he started calling me like after every job he did like look I just made this amount I just made that amount so you know it sparked my interest so I jumped in now when I jumped in the first thing I did was I didn't have any training of appliances the only thing I knew was that you know you needed them in your life but then like you know I started researching like different schools and different vocational centers near me different online stuff and um There weren't any local, in my, in my city at the time, there weren't any local vocational schools that taught this. And the guys who were doing it, you know, I didn't feel comfortable enough to apply for a job with them because I didn't have any background in it. <clears throat> now, I did have an a degree in electronics and a degree in heating and air conditioning. I did have that, but only theory in school. I didn't have any theory of appliance repair. So what I did was I um, I went online and I started looking up some various schools. And, um, you know, I chose one that, you know, the school marketed themselves pretty legit as far as you know having you start your own business and how much money you're gonna make and this and that but to their credit that's about all they were good for you know from a, a technical side of things they 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 were pretty pretty behind on the times I know that now I didn't know that then and um, I joined that school and, you know, I paid, you know, whatever it was and whatever. Um, so I started doing appliance repair. Now, at the time, I was working two dead-end jobs. And um, I started advertising online, you know, and I started, uh, and I started with no money. Um, I think I started with my account in the negative to be exact, I think it was something like negative two hundred and forty-seven dollars. 
because you know I didn't have any tools I didn't have a website I didn't have my license I didn't have any insurance because I was living check to check for my other two jobs but you know I I went to like the flea market I bought like secondhand tools you know like the bare minimum I didn't even have a legit tool bag like I had a book bag like the type you send your kids to school with I was pretty rinky dink by all means and going off of this other school's you know uh, uh, model you know they would be there if you needed them and they'd help you over the phone which wasn't necessarily true sometimes sometimes no so I started advertising online now when I started advertising online um I remember I got my first call it was a washer not draining or something and um I think combined and I want to be very clear about this combined in one job my old dead end jobs I think I was making like 350 a week and then my part time I was making about 200 a week so I was making about 550 a week working 60 70 hours which is pretty bad but I got a call and there was a guy that he needed his washer repaired because it wasn't draining and you know I got butterflies in my stomach I'm nervous you know I I started like YouTube it no they didn't have YouTube back then or did they I don't think they did but I started like reading up on it and I started like doing my homework and preparing for the call and I show up and I do the job and um I think I made something like profit, like 120 or something for a job that took maybe like three, four hours. Then now I'll probably do it in like 15 minutes. But, you know, I felt good. So the guy tells me like after I'm done, like, hey, listen, I got a, my girlfriend lives in the other side of town. Can you go do a dryer? But I looked at the map and I was like, but sir, I don't service that that side of town. So he was like, well, I'll pay you for your gas. So, you know, I, I, I made up some number like, I don't know, 60 bucks for the gas. And then like 60, no, my service call was like 30 bucks or 40 bucks or something stupid. I was like, it's gonna be 70 just to go out there. But you see, the problem was is that I was broke or living check to check so for me $70 was like a big deal and I was scared to tell him and he was like no problem and I couldn't believe he said it and that's not even the labor or to fix the problem that's just to get from where I'm at to where his girlfriend's at for my quote unquote expertise if that's what you want to call it back then but nonetheless I went out there and I think she had like a bad thermal fuse or a thermostat or something stupid and I think I charged them like 130 labor to like change it or something and right then and there you know those two jobs I think I made something like let's see 120 40 that's 160 plus he gave me 60 for the gas that's 200 and then plus the 120 for the labor that's 320 so I made in two jobs basically what I made in one full 40 hour week of working and I was like man I can't believe this well at the time I found this guy because I was using a, le a lead generator company and you know they would send you jobs and they would charge you like 20 bucks or something for the lead so you know i did that and i couldn't believe how 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 you know how that was so the next day you know i i go into work and and you know i'm i'm working and now i'm like super stoked you know and i'm telling myself like i gotta become an appliance repair technician full time and i gotta leave these jobs because what my intent was to leave one and work nine to five in one job and then at night do appliance repair. 
Well, what happened was is that while I was working my part time, I got three calls, and there were three refrigerators. But I couldn't, I couldn't just leave the job and go, you know, fix the people's refrigerators. So, you know, my 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 partner, my female partner back in the time, she told me like, if I was you, I'd walk right out of that job. But you know, I got, you know, I got some sort of morale and 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 you know, moral compass, and I I couldn't do that. But what I did was. I did just come to determination, like, you know what? I got to get out of here. So I went up to the boss and I told him, like, sir, listen, I know it's typically formal to give at least two weeks. But this was a, 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 a pharmacy store. Like, there was nothing, like, professional about, you know, or, or like, prominent about this position that I held. It was a really easy, replaceable uh, position. So, like, they probably had about 70 applicants waiting to get a call from you know to do what I was doing but nonetheless I told him like you know I can't work no more I'm sorry you know I'm doing something else and the guy looked at me like I was crazy when I told him what I was gonna start doing he told me like you're gonna fix appliances I'll never forget that guy's face when he said that because and I'm not trying to brag I I'm really trying to be modest I think the guy was with that company for like 20 years, 30 years, and the highest position he held was probably like a store manager, where he probably made, at a maximum, 50,000, at a maximum, and probably 10 or 15,000 on a bonus. So about 65,000 a year, unless I'm wrong, but at a maximum. And mind you, that's after 20 years of being with that place. And he looked at me like if I was making the most stupid decision in my life. Well, I left and I didn't take his his uh, opinion, thank God. Then I started working my nine to five and then I started doing appliances at night. But I was making so much money at night that like one or two jobs, I was already making what I was making in, in, in both jobs in a week. So, I started, I quit my other job too. I told that guy like, hey sir, listen, you know, I can't do this no more. And he told me like, all right, you know, best of luck to you. And that was a scary moment in my life because people get comfortable with a check, you know? They get a sense of false security. Like, okay, I work, I get paid every week, every two weeks, I get X amount, and I could budget my lifestyle around, you know, what I make, but I, I I couldn't do it like that and no more like I felt like it was too much money to be made or to be had and I was wasting precious time at these stupid rinky dink gigs so I'm I'm like a shark in, I'm like a fish in a shark infested water I don't know where my next dollar's coming from I'm by the phone I'm scared for my life but fortunately the calls kept coming and they kept coming and they kept coming and I kept growing and I kept growing. I kept acquiring knowledge. I kept becoming better and better fine tuned into my craft. I started researching myself different marketing techniques. Uh, a warranty company reached out to me. I started doing warranty work for them. Uh, I eventually grew my business. I hired two guys. I had a receptionist. And at one point I was pretty much like Realistically, probably making six figures, something like 110, 120, or 100. I never really sat down and, and calculated all of it, but I know that every month, like, my deposits into my bank account was probably like anywhere between 15 and 25,000 a, a, a month. But mind you, though, that, that's with parts, that's with what other technicians were making for the company. So a clean number, I, I can't give you. But I know I, I never really struggled at that point after that. I know I was well off. Or at least I think I'm, at least I thought I was well off. But now I stand, you know, like at a point where like 
I look online and like you know like you could type in like HVAC um whatever and you know you have like 40 guys telling you their different theories and what schools to go to and a typical day in the life and this and that you could type in electrician plumber or whatever but I feel like appliance repair doesn't have like like enough exposure maybe that's a good thing because like that the industry will remain esoteric and quiet and not a lot of people will do it giving more jobs to me and to you if you aspire to do this or if you're doing it already but that's how I broke into you know appliance repair I, and I know probably what you're asking myself like you know like but where can I get training you know what do you recommend I do like you know how can I increase my skills one thing I'll tell you is that like you gotta number one appliance repair is not what it used to be everything now is electronic you gotta know how to read schematics you know you gotta have an understanding and a, a, a sound understanding of theory and that's what separates real text from part change and monkeys so your question is like well where do I acquire this knowledge well I know what worked for me from a theory side of the house was a book called How to Repair and Troubleshoot Major Appliances, um, third edition. I think the author's name was Eric Kleiner. And um, that book, that, that gave me a really sound like base as far as knowledge on just how appliances work. You know, how their theory, electrical, electronic, you know, refrigeration theory. It was just a really sound, solid book. And, you know, I, I would definitely say that that's a good starting point, you know. Um, once you understand the theory, they all work the same. Just one, one manufacturer puts one part here, the other one puts it there. One calls it a this, the other one calls it a that, but at the end of the day, the theory never changes. So once you understand the theory, I will put my emphasis on electronic and electrical big time. Like you gotta have a, a solid grasp of that. Now I've been thinking about doing some YouTube videos in regards to appliance repair, but what I'll tell you is that there's already a lot of um, guys that teach this and there's a lot of guys that um, offer this training I don't really put my name behind things but one guy that I'll say that he's he's training guys in electrical and in appliance repair and schematics he's actually a, a friend of mine his name is Scott the Samurai um I've learned a plethora, an abundance of, of knowledge from him and, and, you know, just on the electrical and the schematic side of the house, I've learned a lot from him. He really fine-tuned my, 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 my craft. But then, you know, there's the disassembly portion of it that's very important. And for that, you can go on YouTube, you know, you can, you know... You can you can always look up how to tear something apart you know and after you start tearing them apart they don't they all I don't know like it's kind of pretty like it gets to a point that like I work on machines that I've never seen in my life but like once you've taken apart so many you, you just not intimidated no more and you figure it out like it's hard to explain but I'm at a point now where I don't care what you give me like I could pretty much tear everything apart and put it all back together but that comes with time. There's a learning curve. Another, another important aspect of it is the customer relationship. You know, you can't be like a miserable person, or you can't be sensitive, or you can't be like a complaining kind of guy, or or mean and uh, you know, you're going into people's homes. You know, you're going into people's private sanctuaries. You know, you're seeing their kids, 
they're animals. If you're not an animal guy, I don't know, you know, some guys take offense to when you get there and you like shoo their dog away, like, Ugh, get away from me. Some people take offense to that, you know? I mean, if you're not, if you're not into dogs, you could politely ask like, hey, sir or ma'am, if it's not too much, you know, can you put up the dog so I can, you know, work, you know, and, and focus on the problem? Because I'm scared of dogs. You can always say something like that. But that looks better than, hey, can you put up the dog? You know, you got to understand, like, I know guys that are great with customers, but not so great technicians. And they do better, believe it or not, with guys who are great with appliances, but not too good with customers. Customer relationship is a, is a important skill to, to have. So, you know, like I said, if, if you're thinking about this, you know, there's a lot to, to take on when you enter into this field. You know, physically, are you strong enough to withstand eight hours of crouching, 